So you want to know what's in Minecraft 1.21? All the new mobs, new items, new places? You've come to the right place. Today I'm going to be showing you everything new coming to Minecraft 1.21 so far. So first off, you want to visit the underground tunnels in Minecraft? We got the trial ruins, trial chambers. I keep getting them mixed up. This place adds a ton of new blocks and features, which we'll talk about later. And just like the underground tunnels, we got homeless people. I'm joking, by the way. No offense to the bog. A new mob that looks kind of like the stray, but like, Swamp Edition. I think it's a few updates too late. This skeleton variant spawns in swamps, and instead of normal arrows, it shoots poisonous arrows at you, which is exactly what we needed. Another mob that can poison you. Last year they gave us the big yes, sniff sir. man, today we get the bogged. But the bogged isn't the only mob in 1.21. Another mob being added is the armadillo, last year's mob vote winner, allegedly. I still don't know how it even won, there was some voter fraud or something. The first thing you'll notice about the armadillo is that it's really scared of you. Yeah, whenever you get close to these guys, they just roll up into a ball. So the only way to actually get close to them is by crouching. They do make a really good soccer ball though if you don't. Now if you want to breed some armadillos, you have to give them some spider eyes. That's kind of a weird item for that I guess, but whatever. And if you want to harvest some scoop from these guys, you can take a brush and rub them with it. I don't know how my man isn't bald yet. And with these scoots, you can craft dog armor using this recipe. Similar to real life, you can now dress up your poodle however you like. But of course in game, your dog actually gets some protection from it. Well I don't know. Maybe they are similar, because I wouldn't mess with this guy. You can combine dog armor with any dye to give your dogs all sorts of drip. And now we just need dog chains dog watches, dog shoes. But this isn't the only update that dogs received, as you can now find different breeds of dogs depending on what biome you're in. You can get a rusty wolf in the jungle, a striped wolf in the badlands, snowy wolf in a grove biome, the ashen wolf in a snowy taiga, the woods wolf in the forest, a chestnut wolf in the old growth spruce taiga, and don't confuse that with the old growth pine taiga that has a black wolf. And finally we have the spotted wolf in the savanna, which kind of looks like all of the wolves mixed together. Kind of like how the new mob, the Breeze, looks like the Blaze. Because I think they're related or something. I don't know. They both drop rods when you kill them. But do you want to see something really stupid? Why aren't they both the same model in your hands? Anyways, the Breeze attacks you with some wind stuff, kind of like the Big Bad Wolf. And they are found in the trial chambers, you know, the structure from before. And if you put the Breeze rod into a crafting slot, you can get these wind charges. Which allow you to do these really cool rocket jumps. Yay. Another thing you can do with a breeze rod is combine it with a heavy core, and when you do that, you get a mace. Not to be confused with the stuff you spray, the mace is the newest weapon in Minecraft. And at 7 attack damage, swinging as fast as a sword, this weapon is basically just a diamond sword. That is, until you find out that the maze does more damage if you fall and then hit something with it. You've probably seen people one-shotting the warden with it, but if you haven't, here you go. Yeah, basically this thing is kind of insane. But it doesn't stop there, because you can also enchant your mace to make it even more powerful. The enchants are Breach, which has something to do with armor. I honestly don't even know what it does. Wind Burst, which gives the effect of a wind charge every time you hit something, which is actually pretty funny when you realize that you can fly with it. And finally we have Density, which makes the mace do even more damage when you're falling. Now I can just jump off the diving board to drop the warden. I don't even have to go up that far. But as I said before, the mace is made using a heavy core. And you've probably never heard of this retextured head block that unfortunately you can't actually wear on your head. And that is because the heavy core is found in the new trial vaults in the trial chambers. These vaults work pretty simply. First you need to complete a trial by walking up to one of the trial spawners and getting it to spawn some mobs. The spawner will spawn a few waves of mobs before finally gifting you an item which has a chance of being this trial key. Once we have the trial key, we gotta find one of these things which is the trial vault. And then you right click it with the trial key to do even more gambling until we eventually get a heavy core. Guys, we're gonna get the heavy core eventually, never give up. Something else you can get from these is the brand new bad omen potion. Not exactly what I was expecting to get out of the vending machine, but basically how this potion works is it replaces the bad omen that you used to get from killing a pillager with a flag. Now you actually have to consent to getting bad omen first by drinking the potion. Once you drink the omen potion, you can start a raid like usual, or you can visit the trial chambers and start an ominous trial. From what I can tell, the ominous 
ominous trial is a little bit more difficult than the regular trial. And when you complete an ominous trial, there is a chance of getting an ominous trial key, which can just open the ominous vaults, which look like the other vaults, but just more scary. Drinking a potion with eyes is definitely a little weird, but fortunately there's a few potions being added that are a little bit less weird. The first potion is a wind charge potion, which you would think is made with a wind charge because of the name, but no, you gotta use the whole breeze rod to make a batch of these potions. And when a player or mob is affected with wind charging, it will just give off one of these wind charge effects when it dies. Similarly, the weaving potion, which is made with a cobweb, causes an entity to drop a few cobwebs when it dies. The oozing potion is brewed using an entire slime block, but if used properly, you can actually spend slime balls to make slime balls, as entities will spawn slimes after they die if they are affected with oozing. Unfortunately, this potion effect doesn't work with slimes though, so we can't get an infinite slime glitch going. The last potion is brewed with a stone block, which makes no sense how that's even doing anything. I mean, how are they brewing a whole stone block? And this potion is the infested potion. This potion should actually be renamed to the annoying potion, as it gives a 5% chance of spawning a silverfish when taking damage, which obviously doesn't sound that bad until you get hit with the infested potion yourself. I guess now I'm the silverfish man. Speaking of new stuff in 1.21, there's a few new things that you can only get from trial chambers. To start, we have the new armor trims. This is the bolt armor trim, and this is the flow armor trim. It's based on the wind guy, I guess, but it actually looks pretty cool, unlike some other trims. There's the flow, guster, and scrape pottery shards, which can be found on pots around the trial chambers as well. And finally, the vault can give you a flow or guster banner pattern if you're interested in those. Going back to the trial chambers, there are actually a lot of new blocks being added, which are used in the making of this structure. Starting off, we have the most obvious one, which is these tough bricks that are basically all over the structure. Tough bricks are crafted by using four tough to make polished tough, which then can be used to create tough bricks with the same recipe. There are also these chiseled tough bricks found in the structure, which seem to give it a little more detail. And there is just regular chiseled tough that is mixed in with the other new blocks as well. Each one of these tough variants, including regular tough, also comes with new stairs, slabs, and walls. And overall, I think it's really cool that they actually made the tough block have a use, as it was just some random block that you find at Deep Slate level before. But tough isn't the only block that got a bunch of new variants, as there will be a lot of new copper-based blocks in 1.21 as well. Starting with this block that is seen all over the new trial chambers structure, which is called the copper grate. The copper grate is unlike any other Minecraft block we've seen before, as it's sort of like a full block fence. Another unique copper block that is being added is the copper bulb, which sort of works like a redstone lamp, but it's a little more advanced, as it emits different light levels based on how oxidized the copper is. The copper bulb requires redstone to activate it if it isn't naturally spawning, and if it starts becoming oxidized, you can right click it with an axe to unoxidize it, which I'm pretty sure isn't a new feature, but I never knew it existed, so I'm putting it in here. There is also a new block called chiseled copper, which features this X pattern on it that looks super cool, and there are copper doors and trap doors being added as well, which are the second type of metal doors to be in the game. The difference between iron doors and copper doors, though, is that you don't need redstone to open them. You can just right click them like any other wooden door instead. There also seems to be a handle looking thing that kind of looks like a key slot, and I think it would be cool if they made it so you can lock these doors with the new trial keys. If you play Minecraft, you probably know what a crafting table is, and if you don't, then I don't really know what you've been doing. But now you won't even have to use crafting tables anymore because there is a new auto crafter coming in Minecraft 1.21. You need these items to craft the auto crafter, and once you've crafted this thing, you can right click it and place items inside it similar to a regular crafting table. The only difference is that you also have to use redstone in order to complete the craft. You can't just take it out like a crafting table. The crafter only crafts one item at a time, meaning you have to spam it to get your items out, but this shouldn't be a problem if you're using it in some kind of redstone machine and not just pressing a button like this. Unfortunately, this is the only redstone I know how to do, so I won't be using the crafter. Another thing you can do is toggle the slots on and off, making it possible to automate recipes that don't take up the entire crafting area, and obviously you can use hoppers and droppers to fill this thing, because if you couldn't, it would kind of be useless. Another thing you can use hoppers and droppers to fill is the decorated pots that were actually added in 1.20, but now have a few new features being added to them. To start, you can right-click decorated pots to fill them with a single stack of items, which wasn't possible in the previous update. The only problem with storing your items in a pot is that you can't get them out without breaking the pot, so they really have more map-making use as they can be used to hide items. You can also now shoot decorated pots to break them, and this not only works with arrows, but this also works with any projectile, including projectiles that are shot by mobs. Unfortunately, the breeze can't break them.
them, though. You can stack decorated pots up to 64, which wasn't a thing before. You used to just have to have a full inventory of them. And overall, I think these changes are pretty cool. It's definitely a lot better than how the decorated pots were before. Another mob-related change that is coming to Minecraft 1.21 involves bats. The mob that has been in the game for years has actually gotten a new texture added to it, similar to the Vex changes that we saw in the last update. The bat also has a new flying animation, which looks a lot cooler than the old bat, and it can also hang underneath blocks, although I'm not sure if this is a new feature, it might have been in the game before. Overall, I think these bats look pretty cool, and I hope they continue updating old mobs in the future, because some of them could really use an upgrade. You've probably heard this noise when an enderman teleports away from you, but in the new update, this noise is going to have another use, because now when you throw an ender pearl and it lands, you will hear this noise as well. This means the days of silently ender pearling on people are unfortunately over. The slash tick command is a new command that can be used to manipulate the speed of the game, and if you type slash tick rate and then a speed, you can actually speed up or slow down Minecraft without the use of an external program like you had to before. And you are also able to just completely freeze the game if you do slash tick freeze, which can be kinda cool, I mean look at this red cow. Another thing you can do is slash tick sprint and then a time, which will make the game go super fast until the chosen time is up, and this is definitely one of my favorite things you can do with this command, as it can help a lot with making time lapses. So far in 1.21, we've seen some pretty cool features, and I'm excited to see what more is added in the future snapshots.